Today we're participating in a research project that's a collaboration between the University of Missouri and Wildlife Services National Wildlife Research Center for SARS-CoV-2 in Norway rats in Brooklyn, New York. And there's also like a rat guy pole at the bottom of the drainage. So SARS-CoV-2, while we're past the pandemic stage, the virus still is circulating in people in certain parts of the world, as well as in animals. This project in particular is important because Norway rats and people inhabit the same spaces in New York City. So there's a lot of opportunities for them to come into contact with one another. And to get an idea of also how those wildlife species could be acting as reservoir species for the virus. We come down here before we even put traps in the ground and we scope out spots. Those are set out kind of strategically in areas where you might expect to find rats. Looking for holes in the ground, rat runs, physically like seeing rats. We're using a very standard small cage trap. If you make it look nice and neat and welcoming, a rat's gonna go into it. And if they're a little skeptical of going in there, they'll eventually go in there. We come back and check those traps. And then they're captured unharmed in the trap alive. Any rats that we catch are then humanely euthanized. That whole blood sample is then shipped off to University of Missouri so that they can perform the lab analysis on the specimens. Find his way in, he didn't want to go into that one. I would have never expected to be trapping rats in New York City for wildlife disease research. In college, I was a bird guy. I had very little interest in mammals, and now most of my job is with squirrels, chipmunks, rats now. It's a rat. And I love it. That is a rat and a half right there. We have a very close association with the University of Missouri, who has a team of experts from the medical college as well as the veterinary college, and do the sophisticated analysis we need to conduct to understand if the changes in the virus is occurring. When our FS team send us the samples, we can look into two things. One is the sample, how any virus present. And then the serial sample, we just do serial GSA to see whether the animal is being exposed. Working with outside collaborators, building those relationships is really beneficial because we all have the same goals in mind. I think we are very grateful for collaboration with FS, uh, so this one learn from them. And having those relationships is, is crucial because it enables us to have access to the newest science. I think we are a great team. Every time a virus moves from one group, such as people, to another group, such as animals, the virus has the potential to change its structure. There's a, a term that we like to use called One Health. And essentially what that means is the health of animals whether they be livestock or, or companion animals, wild animals, and our health is all linked. And so if our animals are healthy and if we can keep an understanding of how our wildlife and our domestic species are doing, then humans will ultimately benefit from that. It's important that we have an understanding of how SARS-CoV-2 moves throughout animal populations how these diseases are transmitted, how they affect each group, and try to predict what might happen with some of these diseases in the future. Because if we stop doing this, there's a potential for the pathogens to evolve relatively quickly without our knowledge, and then we'd be surprised by new diseases that might emerge from them. So we can better manage the health of the animals that we protect and the health of humans that we love.